Hey guys, little boy here, and this is my ultimate item build tutorial. In this episode, we're going to talk about mid lane heroes and the early game. This series will focus on three specific things in every episode. What's considered the standard starting item build or the most important thing to look out for when going for items in that lane. What are the follow-up items in general, in which order did pros go for them and why. And did they make changes along the way, what were those changes and why. This video is not an easy job to tackle. There are a lot of variables and combining concise information while being in depth is very hard. For this reason, I will try to focus most of what I say toward things that are popular in this patch. Another addendum I feel like I should talk about is weird matchups. I mean, sometimes going magic one first is good because there's a Bristol back mid or Batrider, but this happens very rarely, so keep that in mind. For starters, the most accepted build for ranged heroes in the mid lane is 3 branches, 2 pull tangos, and either a wraith band or no talisman, depending on your hero's attributes. Most of the time when you see anything different, that hero either lost gold or randomed. You need to understand that with ranged heroes, you're interested about getting more damage to get less hits easier in that lane. You get 3 branches because you can eat your tango with one of those branches, while still having 2 to finish your magic wand, an item that pretty much every mid hero goes for. For melee heroes, there's more nuance to it. You still kinda want damage, sometimes some melee mid heroes go for Quelling Blade, but this is not an absolute. Most of the time you will see melee heroes going for Poorman Shield, 2 pull tangles and 2 branches. But there are other alternatives. First of all, agility melee heroes always go for PMS in the mid lane with the exception of Meepo. Some players like to go for Iron Talon and 2 branches while others go for PMS and 2 branches. I don't play Meepo so I'm not really sure why. The obvious answer is that it depends on how much you want to farm the jungle or how much you're going to need to farm the jungle during the lane phase. A lot of Ember players like to go for PMS, 1 branch and on Fairy Fire for instance. Getting early kills with Ember is something that can happen a lot of the times and this can lead you towards the enemy tower or aggressive dives and in these situations fairy fire can guarantee you get the first blood even if both of you die. Other heroes like Pudge mid like to get tons of salves since they lose HP to cast rot and get kills and you can even keep up yourself while you use rot in the early levels. So Magnus for instance don't finish poor man shield, they go stealth shield and quell and blade to maximize the amount of last hits they can get and how much they can deny but when they are faced against heavy right click range heroes, poor man shield shows up a little bit more. Timbersaw is another hero where poor man shield is the norm, but against melee heroes you can sometimes see different builds, like stealth shielding to mango to get more burst potential against that melee hero. So let's talk about follow up items, and this makes things pretty tricky since there are so many heroes to talk about. Shadow Fiend is the most popular hero in 5k plus games, uh, so the most common build is going in bottle, followed by boots, finishing wand, Aquila, and then treads, while most of the time raindrops will be bought along the way. But this has tons of nuance. Some Shadow Fins will go Aquila right after Boots when they are against heroes that have a lot of right click damage, like TA and Invoker. Sometimes when the SF doesn't have the best laning phase, you can see them skipping bottle completely like Weha does here. But anyways, at about 10 minutes into the game, this is what you're usually going to have with Shadow Fin. Treads, Aquila, Wand, Raindrops and maybe one component of your Dragomance or whatever it is you're going for. We have a lot of different buildups for Shadow Fiend. The most common are Blink Dagger, Dragonlance, Shadow Blade, and Use Scepter. Invoker has less variety, and I say that because I'm going to ignore Quaswax Invoker in this video because pretty much everyone goes for different items. Some people finish phase and then go Midas, we still have people going on, just too messy and with full plays and games for me to say for sure. Talking about Exhort Invoker though, we have a pretty clear build up now. You start with no talisman and your branches, followed by naked boots and then wand or raindrops, it varies, followed by glows of haste and Midas. I should add that some invokers sometimes go for Basilius or but I feel like this is a trend that will disappear. At about 10 minutes into the game, you should either have one component of U Scepter or Egg Scepter, depending on who you're playing against. Juggernaut mid has seen a lot of play in the mid lane as one of the counters to Ember Spirit that actually go through the band stages in competitive games. The usual item build is Purman Shield, followed by Quelling Blade, Face Boots, Aquila, and you should be close on your Helm of the Dominator at the 10 minute mark. Depending on the matchup, you can see a Magic Wand or not, but I would say that Magic Wand is a good item on Juggernaut. With stats not being available anymore, the mana burst that the item can give you during fights is very beneficial to the hero. When I started making this video, I felt like Ember Spirit was going to be an easy one as well, and it was until I saw that Miracle started a new trend. So yeah, most of the time your item build is Perman Shield and Branches, or Fairy Fires, if you feel like your mid matchup is favorable enough for you to try to kill the enemy mid, followed by Bottle, Boots, 
wand followed by the veil components. You start the veil with the new talismans because it gives you more mana to those mid game fights. Miracles sometimes go for this very unusual build when you compare it to what's come on right now. The thing about Miracles build is more about who he playing against, at least this is what I gather. One of the biggest counters to Amber Spirit is Disruptor. You can be really good with Amber and still get easily dealt with. Pretty much every game I saw Miracle going for this build he was playing against a Disruptor or Sand King. The build is basically about being more tanky. If you think about it, the price of Ekla plus Thread's components besides Boots is pretty much the same of Veil. Vale. With Thread Switch you have the same amount of mana at your disposal but with the chance of being more tanky if needed. Yes, you lose a lot of your early game power spike, but the thing is, you're going to play a little bit less aggressive and use Thread Switch to farm your Lincolns, and that will give you more mid-game security. I'm not sure how good this build is and I feel like a big part of getting this right is playstyle and this video is not long enough for me to talk about it. Magnus has two pretty distinct paths you can go for. One is the old school, Arcane Boots Magnus. It's not so popular anymore, but if you're playing against a ranged hero that can zone you too hard, it's usually better to go towards that path, or else you're either going to die when farming or not farm enough to make the Echo Saber build viable. This build usually starts with Stealth Shield and Quelling Blade. If you're going for the Echo Saber build, sometimes you can see Poor Man Shield because the agility helps you farm the jungle faster, followed by Bottle, Woods, Wand, and Raindrops. The order is very game dependent, followed by Arcanes and Blink. In a good game, you should have all of these at about 10 to 15 minutes. The other build is very geared towards being a physical damage core. It's more common when playing against the likes of Ember Spirit, Timbersaw, PA, but you can do it against ranged cores as well. It's just a little bit harder. It's also more common to go stealth shoot into quelling blade in this build since a lot of the times you're against melee heroes and you're not going to be harassed as much. Since this build is a little bit farm centric sometimes you don't see either wand or raindrops and instead these magnus go for iron talon before threads. So the build up is usually stout slash pms into bottle, boots, iron talon, wand but not always threads and then echo saber. You should have all of that at around 10 to 15 minutes into a good game as well. I'm going to ignore Envy's existence when I talk about Murana, I agree he has a different playstyle, but since no one adapt to it until now I feel like I would be wasting time here. The usual Murana build is Wraith Band, Branches, followed by Bottle, Boots, sometimes you will see raindrops, not always, but they usually come before or together with Magic Wand. The next item is Face Boots, sometimes players skip the item because they have a draw in their team or because their laning phase went too bad. Face Boots is an easy way to get more or less hits in lane and get kills easier. If you need to recover in a game, it's better to rush eggs instead of finishing Face Boots most of the time. Tinker is a very straightforward hero. There are very few things players change up in their item build. You start with new talisman, branches, go bottom into boots and travels, hopefully. There are two change ups. If you die more than twice in your laning phase then going soul ring while trying to transition to a march of machines build and farm your travels is usually the way to go. When you're having a good laning phase, getting travels first is always better, at least in my opinion. Sometimes you can see someone going for raindrops before travels, but that's pretty much it. Not a lot of deviations. Timbersaw is a somewhat weird hero, usually you want to go with your PMS and branches, then boots into your canes, maybe along the way you get raindrops and or a mango followed by bottle, and only then you finish by getting wand and then the bloodstone items. If you're having a good game, soul ring is usually better since it gives you more aggressive power. The other two options usually are point booster or vitality booster. If you plan on going for a vitality booster, I feel like hushing a hood is better. If you're playing Timbersaw, you shouldn't be having trouble against physical damage unless the enemy team has a very farm TA, but that's a problem in itself. Some Timbersaws rush hood in hard games, so they usually finish Arcane's wand and start making the item. Oh, another thing I want to add is that a lot of players keep a mango in their inventory after having bottle and boots. It allows you to pull off stuff like this when you're Miracle. Phantom Assassin is a kind of forgotten hero in this patch, at least in the mid lane. The idea of mid Phantom Assassin is abusing your dagger and the fact that it's considered an attack. So the usual build completely ignores bottle and most players go stuff like Blightstone first, followed by wand and then face, but you start building through blades of attack. 
wand is there because you lack region, and even then, most of the time you're going to make constant use of your shrine and sometimes even bring more region to the lane. It's kinda debatable whether going straight desolator is better than building Ekla. A lot of people have opted for the casual raindrops since they even give you more mana region and they deal with magic burst damage. But Ekla does give you more attack. If you're having a good game and you skip Ekla, you can get Desolator at around the 12 minute mark. Thanks to Miracle, this is going to be longer than I wanted. Well, first of all, Sniper is one of those heroes that like to go very far at the beginning. He is a hero a lot of people like to deal with in the early levels, meaning they can try to dive you, and with a lucky headshot proc, followed by a well-used fairy fire, can really turn the tides of any fight. Some people like to start with two branches though, nothing wrong about that. One thing that impressed me was Puppy, a player known for being a fighter, starting with two branches. Mimis aside though, Sniper is not a hero that needs bottle. If you're proficient with aggro, you can harass the enemy mid without taking too much damage, and the only skill you have have that uses mana pretty much doesn't use mana at all. The most common build is Boots into Ekla. Boots early allows you to play both aggressive and defensive. Ekla is just a perfect item for you to get those last hits. From this point onwards, things can vary. If you're having a great lane, face boots is the best next item, but sometimes wand or raindrops can be better. It's very common for mid snipers to bring selves, so don't worry if you feel like you need one. At the 10 minute mark, you should have face boots, Ekla, wand, raindrops, and an ogre club if you're having a great game. Most of the players go straight dragonlance, starting with ogre club, but sometimes you see a random shadow blade. I wanted to mention Miracle because he's one of the only players that go threads with the hero, and sometimes even multiple wraith bands. I can even understand threads. If you're confident that your team will help you and position accordingly, you will deal more damage with threads in the late game. Guys, one quick reminder, I will be streaming every open qualifier game I possibly can. Tune in my stream, I will be giving tons of free items to make up for my terrible casting. If you want to know the exact time I start streaming, follow me on Twitter. Well, this wraps up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please guys, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see the extended version of this video, please check the link in the description. Pugna is a platform where you can learn from people like Chessy, Fogged, Munib and get better at the game. They have now great content on the new patch and if you want to raise our MMR, this is a great time. Just figure out the patch faster than others and get those easy wins. Okay, so if mid one goes for a 800 HP hero, a very reasonable amount of HP for 5 minutes into the game, he will deal extra 32 damage. And that value only goes down as he casts more skills. For instance, at level 5, if he casts his two skills once, the next arc lighting he casts will add 15 damage from the passive. At the same time, he gets close to 100 extra damage by getting the third point in lightning bolt, and the same extra 15 damage if he gets the second point in arc lighting. But with the added benefit of hitting more targets in the teamfight. So after level 8, you can make